What's going on everybody? It's your boy Brendan AK Drip from Team DDD back with another video. In today's video, I've been away for about a month because I've been just playtesting this deck and working on it and filling out the format and stuff and but um I'm back and I wanted to show you all the update, basically version uh, 4.0 if you want to call it. Um there's some similar some different changes that I decided to do from the previous list. Um, this list, uh, the, the format has shifted a lot. So the side deck has changed, the main deck has changed, the extra deck has changed. So I just wanted to update you all because I told you all to begin with, definitely the um, Shadal enthusiasts and stuff. I um, was telling you all that this is this is probably gonna be the deck that I'm playing competitively for a while now. Um, if you know me and you've been around for the channel for a while, you know I've played, I've played Shadals for years now. I've played them forever. So this is my baby. And ever since I cracked like the code on the 1.0 version of this deck, I haven't been able to put it down. <clears throat> because before when I played it, it was basically Copium because it was like 2019, 2020 format. I really missed it. It was nice because this deck was powerful. But then when I cracked the code and I actually realized that this deck is val like valid again, I was like, all right, we're going in. Um, but I got fourth place uh, when X1 with this um, uh, list at my for my rarity collection event. Um, this deck has been performing well for me for a while now, um, but I made one change in here, and the one change actually came up a lot and has literally saved my ass, <laughs> but we'll talk more about that when we get there. But if you haven't already, please smash the like button, subscribe if you're not, hit the bell notification so you never miss an upload, and check the description for all the ways to support me, uh, Patreon, Discord, um, all my affiliate links all down there below my tcg affiliate link so you can get your um cards no uh, zero charge to you but without further ado let's go ahead and get this video guys um to start it out a lot of it's gonna be cookie cutter we can just go through um three meltdown three alistair two invocation uh, as long as runic's running around i'm not going to cut this to one even though i thought about it and we've talked about it in the past. If you're new around here and this is your first time watching the 4.0 list, if you want like more intel and stuff, you can go watch the other three uh, uh, lists that I made on this. This is not an Invoke Dogmatica list. This actually runs the main deck Shadals. I like to say that during every video because a lot of people are caught off guard and they want to try to call them bricks. If you feel that those cards are bricks, this is not the place for you. I actually enjoy the Shadal cards and I actually enjoy what the utility they provide. So this is not the list for you. You can go ahead and click off of it. Um... Now that the uh, scrubs are gone away, let's talk about the good cards, the bread and the meat of our deck. I'm running three Squam. Um, I'll show you the rest in a sec. The reason why I'm on three Squam is a couple of reasons. Uh, one, I'm running L and I wanted to increase the doll count. Two, this is a spellcaster, so uh, it's a dark spellcaster, which worst case scenario is a target for your uh, Shadow's Light. If you don't draw Alistair or a way to Alistair. So, and on top of that, this in the grind game is not that bad because if you uh, use like Hedgehog to get one in hand and you, this be this becomes any of your other ones. So if you don't know what kind of scenario you're going to need for like utility in the graveyard wise, like out of your other shadows, like a dragon or an aerial or something like that, you can just sit with this in your hand with um, uh, Cartesia on board or whatever and fuse into whatever. And this can get you whatever you need at that time. So um, we'll talk more about that when we move towards it a little bit. Um, but we got two aerial. The rest of the lineup has stayed the same. Um, one dragon, one hedgehog, one falco, and one aerial. Um, I like this lineup. Three, six, nine, ten. I've really enjoyed ten. Um, I don't like cutting it down because this is an all gas build. So it's like we're, we're, we're pushing for fusing like all the time, basically. Uh, so that's why we're running so many um, Shadals. Uh, because we just want to fuse. And if we don't fuse, then we just find a way to pitch them out of our hand with like Nadir Servant and stuff like that. Um, if you haven't already tell, I'm doing this profile in all forms of engine. I typically like to uh, announce that when I am. Um, we got three uh, Shadal Fusion, one L, and one Schism. I cut the Resh because Resh, I just... Um, the L was the rush, and then I was like, I just want to keep fusing. That's all I want to do. I just want to fuse. And L dodging targeting effects is just really nice and helping you push for game too. So, um, the rush, I haven't really, I missed it a little bit. I think it's only because of habit more so than actually missing it. Because like when you, when you've adapted to use that card so much 
in the form of like recursion and maybe like to book something to dodge target effects or to get an extra effect. It's like you've go you have grown accustomed to it. So like it's it's more so of like a custom instead of actually missing. I've not lost a game from missing, if that makes sense. Um, moving on to the Dogmatica, if you want to call it that portion of the deck. Uh, two Cartesia, one Quim, one um, uh, Virtuous, and one Fleur de Lis. Um, I was for a hot mint running uh three cartesia because the card is nasty to draw um if you want to run three you you can you can push for it um i don't blame you i just didn't want to go over 40 or 41 i just i don't know i hate it um if you are wanting to run 42 then by all means run a third cartesia because she um is just broken the draw definitely when you don't see alistair half the time if you see her and alistair you're going to go with her instead of alistair because if alistair gets stopped then you're dead and sitting duck if you don't have Shadow's Light. But if you see her and it gets impermed or Valored, you're still playing on their turn, so you're making your full board regardless on their turn, so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'm running Quim, not for the Synchro or the Link version, uh, like, like a lot of people utilize her for. I'm utilizing her in the form of the exact same way that Branded does. You just sit on Quim and just use her to loop your Virtuous. I mean, your, uh, um, uh, yeah, your uh, Blazing Cartesia. Uh, so you just that's what you basically use her for every now and then you can use her for a fusion material if you want to But we don't really use her for that. We mainly just want to use her for quim control just like branded does um, And then these two are standard nothing needs to be said about it. Um, I love this package um, Like I said, the only thing I would potentially wish I had room for is a third Cartesia But there's just no room because of the utility slots that I'm currently running which you'll see in a second um, we'll talk more about this when we get there. One thing, another reason why I cut this down is because if you see this without a lighter or dark, it's kind of dead unless you're going into Shadal line. So like you, this has to be paired with a name and there was too many times where I just have terrible luck at this game because I'm a bad duelist. I would draw her and nothing but a crap ton of spells. So then she's just sitting duck in my hand. Um, but I do like three when I, I had it, but when I wasn't having those situations. Um, and then obviously more for that package, three Shadows Light, and then um, uh, three Nadir Servant. Um, I thought about cutting this down, but I uh, just missed it too much. So I kept it at three. Rather have consistency over utility any day. Um, this the this card just really overall overperforms all the time. I never once miss my battle phase when I activate this card. Um, because of all the, uh, how aggressive this card is. The ability, like if you normal summon your Alistair, and they imperm or veil it or ash it, and you can banish it to summon another one. And a lot of people lose their lid because they don't know that Alistair is not a once return. So you just go and search whatever you're going to search anyways, and they just go neg one from hand. Uh, but that's it for the doll, the dog side. Um, for the utility slots, um, this is what overperformed for me. Uh, this card has over and over and over performed for me since adding it back, since the format has shifted. Um, this card is absolutely nuts. This card single-handedly has won me so many games with, like, Unchained still running around, um, the uh, U-Bell decks. Uh, this card single-handedly prevents you from getting OTK'd by Tenpai. Uh, it's not that bad into fire. It's more decent into fire than um, uh, people give it credit for. More so when you go first than when they go first, so you can stop them mid combo. Um, this card is just nasty. And then I'm on uh, two talents. I was running three, but the third one turned into a call by. I just didn't want to see too many talents, and call by on a princess just feels good. Um, also, called by stopping the problem that they're trying to interact with instead of having a um a resolu uh, like a solution to the problem uh is really nice um in the form of like hand traps uh, like ashing uh the shadows light um this stopping that is really nice we don't really care about droll if we see if we get access to our shadows light but like it's for that too um but that's it for the um non-engine if you want to call it uh, I don't I don't run hand traps obviously this is a board breaking version uh, and all gas build the last card is foolish burial 
Uh, if you couldn't already tell by like the quim and stuff like that, this this is not a budget build. Um, if you want a budget alternative, like you can not play the quim control and like just put in a third Cartesia and go with that because I know quim is expensive, but I like the quim control because it gives you so much more interaction on your opponent's turn and gives your inboard so many more layers. Um, but that's it for the main deck. 40 or 41, I can't remember. Um, on to the extra deck. Extra deck for the Link Monsters. One Moon Maiden, just for a free um, light, uh, because you just use any level 4 lower spellcaster, which your dragon, your three Squamatas, and your three Alistars are. Um, even, like, your light target, your, your Quims and Cartesias and all that, but they're already light, so it doesn't matter. Um, but uh, the SP Little Knight... Gravity Controller, this is it for your links. This card is the MVP of the deck. This gives you an extra dark for your schism. Um, it gets the card out of the uh, uh, MZ zone. So it, it, it just does so much. And bouncing links is just really nice sometimes too because people forget about that fact. I can just attack, damage that, bounce. It's really nice. Um, for the people who have not seen my other videos on this deck, and are probably already went to the comment section or are going to. I don't run Maximus because that card is terrible. Uh, it go you go neck two kind of sorta of, because your opponent uh, is everyone's pretty much running Garuba for the most part. And if you play Branded or like uh, anything really, it's just terrible. And it requires you to run two extra deck slots in the form of Amirage and Secure Gardener. And this extra deck is way too uh, cramped for that. And it's just it's just requires more setup as to where the rest of the cards don't require setup. Um, for the Shadals, we got three of the best girl, Mommy. Um, three of the, um, best MVP of the entire extra deck. This is the best, my favorite Shadal monster. This card is just stupid. Um, if I had room for three, I would run three. Uh, one Winda. She has win in the name, so we just win when we summon her. People think they're safe out here because, uh, summon limit got banned. Nah, fam, we're going to lock you under the monster summon limit. Feels good. Um, that's it for the doll lineup. I never missed a second one. Even without the rush, I never missed it. I feel like if you're acquiring um, a second window, then you're just playing wrong or you just didn't open model and you're going to lose that game regardless. For the Invoked, um, we got Makaba, uh, Kaliga. Um, this card just destroys and wins games because you sit on this and then sit on Schism to make window if you need to. This card's nasty. Um, definitely gets fire because they have nothing really at the start. They, it forces them to open Witch to out this. And I put Agoides back in. Agoides was actually Typhon. Um, let me talk about this real quick. Uh, this flex spot utility slot in the form of Typhon or Agoides, I'm so back and forth on. I can't decide which one I want. I'm just showing you what I use for the uh, Rarity Collection tournament. Uh, they both come up. They both literally came up. Um, it's just this one I worked. I mean, this one, like, I actually made, obviously, because I didn't have Typhon. But Typhon, like, is really, like, more so, um, like, it'll come up more than this will. Because this requires more setup. But, and we can play under the Floodgate thing. That's no problem with Typhon. Um, it's just, I didn't want to play against a deck that didn't summon twice from the extra deck and then it'd be dead. But if you're playing against a lot of fire, then I'd probably play Typhon. The only issue is with this... This gives you a kill button and ends games quick as where Typhon doesn't. It just helps you break boards. Excuse me. So, like, but this helps you break boards, too. So, like, it just comes down to what you, what's your personal preference and your wallet because this is obviously cheaper than Typhon. Um, Typhon helps you break boards and uh, is a floodgate. This helps you break boards and helps you push for game. As where Typhon is more generic and requires less setup, as where this is not as generic and requires more setup. So it just boils down to what you want. You want to push for game or you want more generic. It just, it's what it boils down to. And what you're willing to pay for if you don't already have them. Um, then the rest of the cards is super poly targets for the most part. Uh, this, this is super poly targets. Nothing said. And then the rest of the dog package. The Lulu Walleth. Card's broken, and then Granganol. Um, one time uh, last night in the, my finals, in the final round, I opened the worst hand and I won with the worst hand. I opened triple super poly and double droplets. Going second, second it was, yeah, 
uh, second, yes. Um, and then I drew a Cartesia for turn. I set the Cartesia and remind you, I was playing against Chimera and the, they had uh, Dia Bells on board, so you can just I, I can't activate nothing, so I activate none of my spells, so I have to set everything. So I set two Super Poly and a Droplet, and uh, he popped the Droplet, and I had two Super Poly, so it was gassed out. And then I just uh, took one of his monsters and Cartesia to make this. And then this got the red, my Shadal engine going. And then when he summoned something else, I banished this to summon um, uh, Lulu Wall or a Despia monster. Fun fact, one thing I want to talk about real quick. If you're playing against Tempai and you get um, Heat Waved, Nadir Servant is a one card, for the most part, full combo playing through a Heat Wave. Because if they Heat Wave you, just go Nadir, uh, you just go um, Nadir Servant, activate Nadir Servant. Search for, um, you can search for two things if you want to. You could search for this, okay? You can search for the Fleur de Lis. Now, bear with me. Stay with me here. I want to show you something really cool. Um, you go, dear servant, search Fleur de Lis. Send this, okay? Then while this is in Graveyard, when they start to try to play, you can go banish the, uh, banish this, Okay? to summon um, a Dogmatica monster from your deck, because you can summon a Despia extra deck monster or a Dogmatica monster from your main deck. Summon this. This is always counted as a Dogmatica or a Despia monster. Summon this, this effect. Foolish, this. So now if they summon something from the extra deck, this comes back, and then this, since it always counts as a Dogmatica monster, your negate is live if they summon something from the extra deck. So that's just off of one card. You'll obviously have a full a set of hand. You could set cards. You could set uh, Shadals and stuff like that. This is just one way that you could still have interaction and play on your opponent's turn if you get, you're playing against Tempai and they uh, hit you with Heat Wave, which is basically turn skip. Um, so I just wanted to show you all that real quick. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for the extra deck. Um, I love every part of the extra deck. The only thing I wish I had room for is Typhon. But like I said, we've already talked about that. So you can make the decision how you see fit. And I still don't even know which way I'm going to lean. I've just shown you what I worked with um, uh, this past tournament. Side deck, because this is a tournament list. Evenly matched has gained um, strength in the form of sh the way the format has shifted. This card is really nice into voiceless voice, melodious, and stuff like that. So this card is just very good. Definitely if you pair it with this card here, uh, which is Forbidden Droplet. Um... I think Forbidden Droplet's way better than um, like Dark Ruler right now because of like Branded and stuff like that. They trying to gimmick puppet lock you and stuff like that because they, a lot of uh, Branded players will make um, their uh, Albion or whatever later on in the turn. Like they want to see what you're playing first and stuff like that. Uh, so this being able to stop that and um, being able to stop uh, Voiceless Voice, which is just really nice. Um, so, yeah. Moving on, we got uh, three Cosmic because you got to be ready for Runic, uh, Runic Stun, um, all those decks. Really solid into Voices Voice too, and it's good against Tempai for obvious reasons. It's just they don't open right, then this can just turn skip them sometimes. Um, and then since I'm I've fully committed to the Board Breaker lineup, uh, three Mind Control and a Change of Heart. These cards are freaking busted. Ain't nothing like stealing an Appaloosa with three or four, like, against, like, fire if they hard make it early. Stealing it and then preventing them from basically using their princess because you just win from there. Because um, that's, like, all you got to worry about is hand traps at that point, And you still have an Appaloosa if they have monster hand traps. So you just eat their board. Because we can eat their board really relatively easy anyways. All we need is, like, a Shadal Fusion to resolve. And we're just, we're in there like swimwear. Um, these cards are just overperform. Uh, excuse my rarities. Uh, Rarity Collection 2 came out, so I'm going to get higher rarities of this, and I'll eventually get another one of this, too. Um, and then the last two cards is uh, Thrust and uh, Duster. These cards are just really nice. It searches anything, and then this um, obviously clears everything against Lab and stuff like that. Um, just break boards. That's all we want to do. We want to summon beautiful fusion monsters and Winda and our beautiful Dogmatic monsters and just break boards. That's all we want to do. Um... But this is it for the side, main, and extra. 15, 15, 40, or 41, I think. Uh, my matchups were... Um, 
<clears throat> which I've played I played against a lot of everything with this deck, regardless of like some of the versions. But what I played last night at the time of recording, so I played against uh, Chimera. Um, I won that one, and then um, I played against uh, what else? I played against round one. Shoot. Round one, sorry guys, I had to regather my thoughts and think of my matchups. Um, round one, I played against Sal Mangrate. Uh, I lost that one. Um, I won game one, lost game two, game three. Uh, that deck's just very good at uh, recursion because it's a toss deck. Toss deck is toss is the best format. I can't change my mind. Um, but I lost that. For, I lost that because I uh, he, he just gathered his resource faster than me, and he just can recycle roar, which is really nice. Um, um, then round two, I had a buy because our, my, the guy dropped because he left. Um, and then round three, um, I played against, um, um, my buddy, uh, uh, Evil Eye, um, sauce build. It's not just Evil Eye control. He's playing a combo version that he made. I don't want to reveal too much sauce, but if you want to try to see the uh, profile of that, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try to get it from him. Uh, it's really nice. It, com it, it It's a legit combo deck. It's not a control like normal summon servers you'll call today. It's it's gas. Um, I won that one. And then round four, I played against Chimera, which was rough because Dia Bells is a freaking card. Just basically being anti-spell on legs and then spamming out Guardian Chimera and stuff like that. Popping my stuff is a problem, but uh, I still won that. That was the one that I won uh, game two in the form of opening three Super Poly and two Forbidden Droplets. This is my opening hand, and my sixth card was Cartesia, and I just T-set, basically, but more than T-set because I set three, and then set Cartesian and won that one. Um, but I've played against Fire and stuff like that. I've won against Tempai and stuff like that. This deck actually has a very good matchup into Tempai because they allow you to go first. And since this is an all-gas build, we just eat hand traps for lunch. So we can pretty much get to Winda no matter what. We make Winda. Winda can't be destroyed by card effects. So, like, nice lightning storm. So it forces them to open a double imperm. Because if they open imperm, they're not just going to hold it. Because they think you're just normal summon Alistair pass if they stop, your uh, stop it with imperm. So, like, once you eat all their hand traps, they don't have hand traps. You force them in a top deck situation. And Winda, they can't out it. So, like... You just win off of her in general, which a lot of people who don't know this deck will try to say that's how we win anyways, but we can win with other cards. Um, but that t that matchup's actually not that hard for us, honestly, and I was really worried that it was going to be. Um, fire can be different, like Snake Eyes. It just depends how you open. If you open, like, uh, Shadow Fusion, like, a couple of, hand tr a couple of uh, extenders, you're just you're winning that. You're not losing it. Um, but this deck is very freaking... It's equipped to literally take down a lot this format your roughest matchup is like um labyrinth is super rough um because they can just they they just like have infinite resources for the most part in the form of like definitely when they get their engine rolling and stuff so like lab is rough branded can be tough depending on how you open because they can they can hang with you and potentially outgrind you because a lot of the engine that we run is actually made for their deck so um it just it just depends um and a lot of like branded decks aren't running super poly right now so like that's where it gives us the upper hand and the advantage but it um if you haven't seen none of my videos before I, and you this is your first one i really think if you have the money to pick this deck up or you have all the cards laying around to use it to play this deck catch a lot of people off guard and like I said, this deck isn't normal summon Alistair, get imperm to Ashed and pass anymore. This deck actually has a lot of stuff that it can do. Um, so, but other than that, that's basically it. I just want to keep you all updated. And I told you all to be on the lookout for the same stuff that I've been posting. Because I just, whenever I make certain changes or notice something else different, I want to talk about it. And this one, I changed some things. And then I wanted to talk about the heat wave interaction and stuff like that too. So, um... But let me know in the comment section down below how long you've been playing this deck, how it's fared for you. And if you uh, have been using Typhon and how it's worked out for you, you can just come back and just let me know. But with that being said, I love you guys so much. It's your boy Brandon K. Drip from Teenage D. So until next time, peace. Good to my guys.